as we get to an example using differentials to do a linear approximation, this drawing right here is going to be critical for the concept underneath. Why is that? Um, so we'll get, we'll kind of piece it back. I might be like flipping the pages back and forth a little bit as we do the example. But here's what I just kind of the gist of what I want you to take away right now. Um, this point right here where the tangent line occurs, that is the easy value. Okay. What we are trying to approximate is up here on the function itself. We would like to know this y value. But we're going to end up finding this y value. And that this will be our approximation. Okay. So how do dy and dx come into play? Well, all right, let's see it. I'm going to keep this page on standby. We're going to go back and revisit that same example, square root 4.37 again, using differentials. OK. If we use differentials, here's what we do. We don't have a formula like the linearization formula. All right. We're just going to say, hmm, what should be the function? Well, square root x. Okay, but we're not going to call it f of x. We're going to say y equals the square root of x. All right. Now, what should x equal? And now here's, there's a shift. We're going to say x equals 4. You're like, what? How can x equal 4? Okay, because we're going to make dx equal to the missing piece, the 0 0.37. Okay, what's going on here? And, and my note, I'm, I'm hoping will be helpful for you. So we pick 4 because that's the easy value. Okay, the dx is the change in x, right? Just like the derivative is the change, right? Differential acts the same way. But a differential is not a slope. A differential only acts in one direction. So this is like the horizontal change, the change in x. So it's changing from 4 to 0.37 to end us up here. All right, so back to the graph. Right, imagine this being 4. Right, this is like the point x, y. So that's 4. And then, but we actually want it here, so the dx is that remaining distance, 0.37. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the differential of both sides, and then we're going to end up plugging in these numbers. All right, so back up there, think of it as y equals x to the 1 half. When we take our derivative, or excuse me, whoa catch myself. When we take our differential of both sides, dy equals 1 half x to the negative 1 half times dx. And we say, okay, okay, so the differential of y, I need to plug in x equaling 4 and dx equaling 0.37. Oh, actually, getting ahead of myself, I rewrote it this way because that's a little bit nicer. Okay. Then I plug in. Let's do it. x dx. Just like that. And I invite you grab a calculator as you're watching this. What number do you get here? And it will probably look familiar. Well, that's 1 fourth times 0.37. What do you get? Oh, wow, that's 0 0.0925. That looked familiar. Yeah, it's the decimal place that came on when we did this before. Now, it's not our final answer, though. What does that 0 0.925 represent? You can see I got my arrow down here, kind of waiting. That's the change in y. All right, so it's it's just the change in that one dimension, but this time it's the vertical change. Okay, let's go back to the drawing. So we started at 4, 2. 
then we changed 0.37 in the x and we changed 0 0.0925 in the y. Okay, but we don't have our answer yet. Why not? Because all we know is the change. What was the original y? That needs to be added on. So we can get the approximation there, right? We don't just want the change. We need to know the change from what? Where was it originally? So to get to the final answer, we have to add the y value of our starting position at x equals 4. So we go back to the function. It was square root x. So what was the y value there? Well, 2, of course. So we take the 2, add it onto this, and now we got our answer, 2.0925. Maybe it'd be good to have a drawing of this this actual case instead of going back to this other drawing, which is not which is not this case. So you know, just a quick sketch. So if we have square root x looks a little something like that. This time we're calling it y equals square root x. Okay, so we had our point four two. Right, we have our tangent line that's occurring right there okay now what we really want is the y value here so what happened was we thought of this triangle all right so that's it for two so this portion was 0.37 that was our DX this portion was the dy, 0 0.0925. Now we overshot it, you know, really there, but the 0 0.0925 made us land way up here. So we know it's an over approximation. We know it's a little bit too big. But it's not a big deal because it's, it's actually very, very close. But we can't answer just with this, right? We need to think, oh, but it, this all started at 2. So it's, right, it's 2 plus 0 0.0925. And we got our answer. Pretty sweet. Uh, some students, you know, they really like the, the idea of differentials um, for getting linear approximations. You may be thinking, well, like, will we always have the choice? No. Um, I'm going to tell you to use differentials or linear approximations. Now, maybe by the time we get to your test on these things, you know, I just say using either differentials or a linear approximation, a linearization, then you then you have the freedom. But I, I might well specify, so know both methods. Okay, we got one last example. This is a cool one. Where differentials um, go a little bit beyond just linear approximations. We just get a little flavor for it here. Uh, the radius of a sphere is 6 centimeters with possible error 0 0.01 centimeters. Find the maximum possible, looks like I forgot a word. Wow. Find the maximum possible error of volume. Okay, so a perfect sphere um, has a radius of six centimeters, but we know there's a potential for error. Obviously, we work in the real world and our machinery is not perfect. So let's find the maximum possible error in the volume. Now, this sort of feels like what we did with epsilon and delta, but a very different approach here using differentials. So let's see here. Um, well, that's all they give us. Uh, so what are we going to do? Do you know how the volume and radius of a sphere are connected in a formula? Do you know the formula for the volume of a sphere? And again, it's like calculus, right? Anything can come at any moment, right? You got to remember all, everything you've ever done in math up to this point at the drop of a hat. Uh, of course, when you're working on homework, you know, you can look these sort of things up. Um, but yeah, 
you just you want to have those of those ready. Um, there are certain themes, um, you know, area of a circle, volume of a sphere, those things come up. Um, a slightly less frequently, but still frequently enough, are like the volume of a cone. Area of a triangle would you know is would be the the two dimensional equivalent. Uh, Pythagorean theorem, you know, is something that comes up a lot in the previous section on related rates. So kind of have these things ready and hope that uh, you've got enough. Just if you're doing the homework and you're you're looking at all those things there carefully and, and watching this lecture, then you're you're in a good position. Let's say that. OK, so if you didn't remember or if you did, here it is uh, the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. OK, so that's how volume and radius are connected. When they start talking about errors, those are the differentials, right? The change in the radius, the change in the volume. How much is it allowed to shift around? So what we're going to do is take the differential of both sides, OK? I'm trying not reveal too much. All right, so differential here. Uh, volume is dv. On the right side, we take the derivative as normal, so the 3 multiplies down. Pi is a constant, so we've got just 4 pi r squared times dr. Okay. Differential of both sides. Now, I've got some arrows. Let me show you what those are. The differentials tell us the error. So the error in the volume the error in the radius. The original value is the ideal. What do we want that radius to be ideally? And then how much is it allowed to shift around? And this equation now tells us, OK, if that's the ideal and that's how much it's allowed to change, all that together tells us how much the volume might change. Right? The derivative is the rate of change. And then the differential brings in this new aspect of like, how much it's allowed to wiggle around, which is pretty sweet if you think about it. All right, so what are we going to do? Um, we're just going to plug these values in, right? So we know the ideal radius is 6. We know dr is the error, 0 0.01. So let's put those in. And we're going to round this to two decimal places. So get pi in there as well, round it all. Here, dv, the possible, the maximum possible error in the volume is 4.52 centimeters cubed when you round it to two decimal places. Hey, how do you know it's centimeters cubed? It's just the same units as volume. So that stays the same. All right. Hey, that's our discussion on differentials and linear approximations. Uh, good luck in the homework.